really fortunate that Paper Towns has the same studio, the same producers, uh, the same, you know, down to the costume designer and the music supervisor, and of course Nat Wolf, who played Isaac in The Fault in Our Stars and is the star of this movie, uh, Quentin Jacobson. I wrote Paper Towns because I was thinking a lot about how difficult it is to imagine other people complexly, like how often we think of other people as merely stupid or merely smart or merely lame or whatever, when in fact like no one is merely anything. That People, as Walt Whitman famously wrote, contain multitudes. Um, and I was thinking about how in a boy-girl relationship, a romantic relationship, uh, that can be really destructive, that failure to understand the other complexly. Um, and that's really where Paper Towns got its start for me. But I wanted it to be a story about, about friendship and about love, like all the kinds of love that are available to humans, not just romantic love, but, but the love in families and the love between friends. The way that we imagine the world does shape the world, like the way that we map our universe does end up shaping the universe itself. And um, that, that was sort of an irresistible metaphor to me, but it's very much what Paper Towns is about. It's about learning to imagine the world in a way that will lead to a better map of the world. So after basically nine years of not hearing from her, Margot Roth Spiegelman shows up in the middle of the night in Q's bedroom and then takes him on this crazy adventure through Orlando, Florida. It culminates with them being on top of the tallest skyscraper in Orlando and they're dancing and he's thinking like, oh man, like this is really gonna happen. Like things are different, Margot likes me now. But all night long, he's completely misinterpreted everything that she was saying and he wakes up the next morning and she's gone. And it falls to Q, you know, in the, Slow, slowly Q realizes the seriousness and, and permanence of her leaving um, and also slowly begins to get a sense that she might have left clues for him. So it becomes a mystery. It becomes a story about him trying to piece together the clues so he can find out where she is. Q is a very anxious kid who is very focused on the future. Um, and I was like that in some ways, but more my best friend in high school was like that and it was infuriating to me because I was always like let's go out and do something fun and he would be like I have to get into Stanford um, and he did get into Stanford now he's a very successful doctor and it all worked out well but um, there was always this tension between like do we live life for now or do we live life for the future and Q is certainly someone who at least at the beginning of the story is living life entirely for the future. There's an excitement to that kind of life, and I think there's an excitement to imagining that kind of life, but then the reality of it is always different um, from your expectations of it. That's true of anything. Like, there's always a disconnect between the way we imagine something and the way that we actually experience it. So I think um, the way that Q looks at Margot is very different from how Margot actually is. Spiegelman, Margot, Margot's last name is Spiegelman, and Spiegelman uh, means mirror maker in German, and Margot's very much like that. Whenever people look at her, what they see is really a reflection of themselves. What they see doesn't say much about Margot in the end. And to Margot, that's, that's infuriating. It's really difficult to live like that. Nat and I sound very similarly when we talk. Like, uh, I think the way that I write just suits Nat's voice really well, and that's the first thing. Um, but also, Nat understands how to chart Q's journey in a really profound way because I think that he can relate to a lot of it. You know, he's, he's had to struggle with the question of whether you live life for the future or for now a lot in his professional and personal life. I also think Nat is just one of the best actors of his generation, so we were lucky to have him and he can kind of do any part. Um, but he's a great cue. I'm so, I, I, yeah, every day I wake up, I'm grateful to Nat Wolf for being in uh, both the movie adaptations of my books because he's just he's one of the funniest, most generous, intelligent people I know. Never since Kara got to set, she has been, for me, Margot Roth Spiegelman. Um, she has, you know, I think Margot is a character who has a lot of expectations put on her, a lot of people making broad conclusions about who she is, and that's something that Kara understands so deeply, and I think she has brought that to the character brilliantly, um, 
and it's it's really powerful. It's it's it, it's wonderful to watch her be Margot. The director of Paper Towns is Jake Schreier, and Jake's previous movie was called Robot and Frank, and I really loved Robot and Frank, so that was the first thing that made me think he'd be a great director for Paper Towns. But he was actually the first person um, the producers talked to about it, and he just had these little images of, of the movie that were just so beautiful and interesting. Uh, I've, I've, you know, Jake, Jake has become a very good friend of mine, so it's difficult to talk about him in a an, in an removed way, but he's just a very, very smart director. He just understands movies, he understands shots, he's extremely prepared, he's one of the hardest working people I've ever met, uh, so we, we couldn't have been luckier in terms of getting, getting Jake to make the movie.